Guys, welcome to the Man Cave. I want to do a review on the 2020 Road King, the Harley Davidson 2020 Road King. So I've had this bike for about a month. Uh, it is going in in two days time for its first service. So it's coming up to the 1600K or 1000 mile service. Um, so not a huge amount of kilometers in that month. I guess that shows you how busy I guess I've been at work. So I have been able to get out on it, but not as, definitely not as much as I'd like. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll be able to at least open it up from that point and give it some gas and uh, and use the bike for all that it is. But my word, am I impressed? Uh, you know what a beautiful machine. Let's get into the review. that you can choose from I just love the black uh, you know apparently 80 85 percent of the Harley Davidson sold worldwide are black so I guess I joined that club but uh, you know really how do you beat a black bike how do you beat a blacked out motorcycle I mean you know they just look awesome really I mean let's talk about um, you know some of the things that I've added to the bike so most of it actually and that's what I loved about this motorcycle is that most of it is actually stock standard so actually as you see it is pretty much how the bike comes aesthetically you know there's not really a lot to talk about in in relation to that but there is some things that i have added to the bike there were personal touches that i wanted to do uh, to make it my own little bits and pieces that were not too gimmicky that uh, sort of give it some more class that is the rear of the 2020 road king um, Let's talk about the pipes. So the pipes, I didn't want uh, pipes that were too loud. Reinhardt slip-ons, that's all they are. They're just a slip-on. They're not a performance exhaust. They're not, uh, you know, the jewels at the back there, they look awesome. Um, they give a nice rumble. I'm gonna start the bike a little bit later on so you guys can hear it. Um, you know, that's just, that's it. Simple slip-ons, uh, more cost-effective. I didn't need to spend thousands. It's not a performance race bike. Um, they do sound a little bit like a sewing machine Harley Davidson's when you do buy them brand new and stock So I just wanted to fix that problem by giving it a little bit of growl. So that's been done um, Number plate. I love my number plate. You know a lot of people hide it. I'm pretty proud of mine double OHD You know, it's the zero zero Harley Davidson, you know, that was something that I was fortunate enough to be able to get um, Let's just cruise up the back here. So docking hardware. So I've actually got the sissy bar, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later on that clips onto these. This docking hardware is not standard, so they put these guys on there. Uh, what uh, I have added to that docking hardware is these caps. So if we take these off, they're just a magnetic cap and they just pull off. That's all it is, magnetic cap. Um, that's how they look, standard. That's how they look with the cap. So they're just a little bit more finished when you don't need to have the sissy bar on. Um, my little bolt here, these seat bolts, you know, standard, they're just pretty ugly, horrible things. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see that, but just trying to get the right angle of it. But, um, you know, that's a Harley Davidson product. You can buy many different bolts. That's classy and simple. I love that one. Uh, the 2020 Road King has been out for a couple of years now. It's got the dropped uh, saddlebags. So they're the, the extra room bags. So they go over the exhaust at the rear, so it looks pretty cool. Uh, so that's that at the back end with the pipes. As we move forward, uh, up here, this is all standard. The gauges are standard. The stock clock, as I call it, I have ordered the new one. Uh, it is on back order from the United States. Um, you know, they're having some delays over there in Milwaukee. Apparently they've changed the ordering system with Harley Davidson. There's like, seven or eight thousand products around the world on back order but the uh, the new gauge that's going to go in there is pretty cool this one's pretty basic it's got a bigger led down the bottom here and some color change options and stuff like that uh, the reason that one's on back order is because the 2020 road king over here on the lever has traction control which is what this button is here uh, so it's it's a button that you can flick in wet weather 
uh, that just gives the bike that more traction so you're not slipping as much. They've all got tra traction control, I believe, but I think that just enhances the traction control. Uh, so it just makes the bike a bit safer in, in wetter conditions. Um, so back down here, love the style of this motorcycle. I mean, it's just originally, just original Harley Davidson. You know, the Road King is just such a beautiful bike to look at. You know, it's, it's heritage, it's got, it just talks about the history of Harley Davidson when you look at the bike. Um, that's what I love about it. It's just, to me, it's a Harley through and through. They've gone really traditional with the, you know, the, the, the badging. Um, which I love. Down here on the air cleaner, um, all I did with this guy was I changed the strip here. Um, the original strip that came on it, you know, it, it shows the 114 motor that it's got, the 114 cubic inch motor. This was it. It's now a wall plaque. So that's actually what comes standard on it. Um, so anyway, change that out just to black it out. I just think it looks a bit cooler with the, you know, the black. Uh, on the air cleaner. I didn't want to put a new air cleaner on aftermarket or Scream Eagle, I just went with the stock. So yeah, what else have we got here? Harley Davidson, Milwaukee. Pretty standard, I'd say. Milwaukee 8 motor, the 114, plenty of power. Uh, love the blacked out engine too, the blacked out engine tops, if that's what you call them. I'm probably getting half this terminology mixed up, so excuse me for doing that. So these are the 19 inch um, I can't even think of the name of them now. Prodigy, that's it, Prodigy. It's called a Prodigy wheel. Um, they previously had the turbine wheel for the 17 and 18 model or 19 model. Uh, at the start, I wasn't a massive fan. It's grown on me. Um, you know, when I look at it individually, I don't know that I love it, but when you look at it in respect of the whole bike, in perspective of the whole bike, I, I do like it. So that's 19 inch. I think the back wheel is 18 inch. Um, the Brembo, ABS brakes, so the brakes are actually pretty awesome. Harley never used to be that great with braking, um, but they, they now are. So that's, that's the other side view of the Prodigy wheel. So back up here, you'll notice the other thing that I've done is the uh, wind splitter. So the black wind splitter. I actually personally think it makes the bike, if you have a look at it. I think it, uh, it finishes the bike off nicely. Without it, it sort of looks a bit plain. I mean, that's sort of how I first chose the bike. But now that I've put it on, I think I'm going to leave it on. Um, hey, girls. So I've taken it on and off a couple of times. Um, I don't know. I just seem to love it with that on now. I just think it looks beasty. I don't know. Put some comments in. Let me know, let me know what you guys think. I, 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 you know, I'd love your opinion too. Uh, while I'm at this front end, you will notice that the headlight is also not standard. That is, uh, as you know, Harley Davidson have had the Daymaker for, for, for a number of years now, the Daymaker headlight. Um, this headlight here is a Daymaker, it's an LED Daymaker. However, this particular one, it's the adaptive LED Daymaker. So let me flick that on and I'm going to show you something else that I've done to the bike. So really, really bright. I'm gonna show you what else I did to the bike. Now, this is something that comes standard. I think it comes standard. You guys can probably correct me in the in the United States, but I think it comes standard on Harley Davidson in the USA, and that's where your headlights on and your indicators uh, stay orange. You know, they stay orange and then they flash, you know, and they blink. I just, I've always loved that. I think it looks awesome, it looks cool. I think it's much safer. It gives you more lighting on the road at night. Just to hardwire the blinkers. This is how it looks, guys. I love it. At night, it just makes you so much more visible. You know, your, your orange lights and your headlights. I mean, look at that headlight, will you? Look how fantastic that is. Adaptive is these, from the center, if we looked at it like a clock, around this side, we've got six LED headlights. And around this side, we've got another six. Now, as you're coming in and you're cornering, let's say you were cornering left, as your take coming into a left corner and the bike starts to lean, these six here will light up and they will shine in, I'm trying to get my thumb right, they will shine in this direction, obviously to light up the corner. Now, if you're turning right, same thing will apply. These six here will light up and it works on that sort of lean angle. So such a beautiful, like the high beam, insane. 
best, definitely the best headlight I think Harley Davidson's ever made. Um, so plenty of lights there and plenty of safety, which is awesome. You might notice back here on the tank, if I go back to the gauge, something I missed a little bit earlier is obviously, you know, these guys, they've been out for a long time, but I just think they look awesome. And that's just getting rid of those big silver, you know, fuel caps. I mean, that's your fuel cap. Um, I don't know, is that for orange juice or Coca-Cola or, or whatever? I don't know what you do with that. That does nothing. I think it's just aesthetics. But these flush mounted caps, they just finish the tank off. If you look at the tank in perspective, I just think it just makes it clean. It just cleans it all up. Um, you know, you have these silver caps on a blacked out bike, not cool. Anyway, that also lights up. If I turn this power on now, so that has also become a fuel gauge, which is really cool. So that now the dots will disappear as I, I start to get lower on fuel. Obviously I've got a full tank at the moment. Um, and this guy here, you just twist and it pops up and then you just unscrew it, take it off and then put your fuel in and you're done. So that's the tank caps. Anyway, what else have I done here? Okay, so let's have a look quickly at the handlebars. Pretty basic mod, but grips, Defiance Collection grips, I think that's what they're called, and the mirror. That's the mirror, okay. I just find the, the standard mirrors on these Harleys, they just look a little bit like a push bike. I don't know. I don't know. They're just sort of like a bubble. They look a, I don't know. They just, you got a mean bike with those mirrors. I've bought a bunch of extra stuff that doesn't live on the bike permanently. And I'm going to show you that um, in just a moment. That's what all that junk is. But, well, it's expensive junk. But anyway, I'm going to show you that later. Because the other thing that I have done is I've bought a touring seat for that. That is a beautiful seat. Nice contour. Uh, very, very comfortable. Um, you know, I think I've only done probably about a two hour stint in the seat, uh, you know, in one hit, which is not a lot, um, but I had no reason to get off the bike. I mean, it was absolutely comfortable, beautiful. The seat that I bought is called the hammock seat. I'm going to put it on. Um, it looks like a toaster, but anyway, it does definitely doesn't look as beautiful as that, but for touring, namely for the pillion, because that's quite a slim, low lying seat, uh, you know, it sort of does contour into the tail thins out at the back area here um, so obviously it can be you know after about an hour I think you get a little bit of bump sore as the pillion not that I've done but I get the report from my wife that that's the case so this uh, the hammock seat should hopefully solve that problem we haven't toured on it yet I only got it two days ago um, but that's it there's your 114 on your primary cover down there I think that's what they call this thing a primary cover but anyway, that's your 114. Floorboards, love the floorboards. Ground clearance is actually pretty impressive. Clearance, they've either, I think they've angled the floorboards, they've lifted them up a little bit to give you that little bit more clearance, which is, which is good. That's it, I'm just having a look over the bike to see if there's anything else that I've added that I've missed. Uh, and I don't actually think there is. So that's what I mean, there's really not a hell of a lot to do with these guys. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty stock as you see it, that's pretty stock as they come out. Uh, which, you know, well done to, to Harley Davidson, well done on that for Harley, you know, that's, that's great. They're listening to the consumer, you know, they're seeing what the guys, what we're doing to bikes, you know, boys and girls are buying these things and they're blacking and they're doing all these things. So why not just make a special? Why not just listen to the market and, you know, these bikes are expensive enough, you'd have to agree, they're expensive enough to buy and get your hands on anyway. You know, uh, my first Harley, you know, the guy looked at me when I bought it and he shook my hand and he said, congratulations on your first Harley. You know, he said, you do realize the bike is the deposit. And I said, <laughs> I, sorry, can you just explain that? I, he said to me, well, have you seen the parts book? You know, I think back then it was 800 pages. I think it's probably nine or a thousand pages long now. Um, you know, it's like a telephone book. I mean, it's amazing. It's awesome. It's a great place to go go flicking through, but he wasn't wrong. I think that first Harley, I, I would have done nearly 20,000 in upgrades on that bike. Um, you know, once you get started, you do one bit, you want to do the next bit. So it's quite amazing. That's why it's awesome. I think they they do these specials. I mean, you've got CVOs, you know, which I've had a few of those. I've had a couple of different CVOs over the years, you know, and they are awesome. That's obviously, you know, where CVO was founded, was looking at, 
what consumers are spending on Harley Davidsons, what they're doing, what are the favourite components, and, and let's build a bike. That's really the foundation of a, a CBO Harley. But they don't always have exactly what you want on them. You know, really, they, they, you know, that's just my, I've had a few of them and that's just how I feel. I think the specials are probably better value. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're about 10, in Australia, they're about $10,000 cheaper than a, than a CVO bike. Um, you know, and they're still pretty kitted out. And whatever you don't have on it, you can put on it. I definitely haven't spent $10,000, uh, $10,000 on extras to get that to the price of a CVO, I can tell you right now. I mean, there, there, there probably is, between all of that, probably three or $4,000, I'm guessing. Um, you know, they're just little things. I mean, you know, it's the same all over the world. Harley parts are expensive. You know, there's a lot of videos and talk on that, but they make a quality product. The windscreen, you know, I mean, that was $660. They're not cheap, you know. Um, everything, every little bit's expensive. You know, your, your, your little hand grips, you know, they're $220, you know, for hand grips. So everything is expensive. The headlight, yeah, let's not go there. You know, I think that was about $1,400 for the headlight. So it was pretty expensive, but, you know, you love your bikes, right? So, you know work hard, you can afford to do this stuff. And um, let's just have one more quick round up. Look at the special. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with this hammock and also the backrest. So we'll cut to that in a sec. But there you go, 2020 Road King. The bike in the back that you can see is the BMW GDL. That's my K1600 GDL Special Option 719. That's a bike that I've had for about a year. There is a review uh, on that. If you have a look at my channel, subscribe and do all that stuff. You'll see my list there. You'll see a, a, a review on that. It was one of the first videos I ever did on YouTube. A little bit embarrassing, but anyway. Um, I mean, that, that that is also an amazing bike, yes. As far as touring goes, I don't know that that bike can probably be beaten, really, but depends what you're after. There's not a lot of culture with those BMWs, I'm just saying. Culture. Leather, noise. You know, it's a Harley Davidson, you know? Cult culture. You know, just, I'm just saying as it, as it is. I don't know if you guys feel the same, that's just how I feel. So let me just move some of this stuff out of the way, but uh, you know, should we start it? Should we hear it? I think we should. Um, let's hear it. will hate me but anyway it's not too loud as you can see it's obviously accentuated i am in my man cave uh which is my garage um so naturally it is going to be a little bit louder in here um but just a nice grumble i love it let's get this bad boy off Hammock seat, sissy bar, rack. It, it does lift you right up. Like I'm, you know, I'm feet flat. I'm about 5'10", so I'm a bit of a short ass, but uh, so I can sit on the Road King very comfortably. Uh, with the hammock seat, uh, I do go to tippy toes, so it's interesting. Um, but it's not really a big deal. You don't spend most of your time with your feet on the ground. You know, your feet are up on the boards or off the ground most of the time and, and uh, it's an extremely comfortable seat. Very, very soft, you know, very, very plush. You know, that, that hammock style, you know, just, just amazing. Very, very comfortable. So, um, so 
so yeah, look forward to doing many miles in that seat. Very, very good quality, like all of Harley's products. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put another uh, video up, which will be the bike kitted out as I'm about to travel. So I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be a luggage review. So we're gonna talk about luggage for the Road King uh, and what that looks like with the luggage review with the bike. Um, so I've got enough luggage there to show you how that setup would look and uh, we should be able to get very comfortably quite a few weeks travel um, without a problem. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how I deck it out, how I'm gonna travel, uh, where everything's gonna sit and what the bags is that I have, what, what bags I've used. Um, they're all genuine Harley Davidson products and um, so yeah, keep your eye out for that link. So there you go, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the review as much as I did doing it. Uh, that's the 2020 Harley Davidson Road King Special. Uh, you know, I love this thing. I look forward to doing so many more tours, videos, vlogs, and kilometers to share with you guys. Um, I hope you enjoy them. If you did, please like, subscribe, you know, hit that bell thing, whatever everyone says. That'd be really appreciated just for some support. Take it easy. Have a good day. See ya.